Things to do in Valencia. Hello guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Travel the World, if you want to visit any other country in the next video, then tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Today I am going to talk about things to do in Valencia. Valencia is capital of autonomous community of the Valencia. From the historic places to the futuristic modern places, you will see the diversified culture and beautiful places here. Basically, it has a center of historic culture, but if you move towards city, then you will see the modern buildings and all that is needed in the modern era. If you are curious to know the places that you can visit and enjoy your next holidays in Valencia, then stay with us until the end because the last place that I am going to show you will definitely make you visit this place once in life. So, without further ado, let's start our video. The City of Arts and Sciences Museum. It was started in the mid-90s and the finishing touches were made in 2005. You can't visit Valencia without seeing the City of Arts and Sciences. This ultramodern scientific and cultural complex, known in Spanish as La Ciudad de las Arts y las Ciencias, is the largest in Europe, and its striking buildings are fast becoming symbols of the city. Set in an expansive area of just under 2 kilometers in the former bed of the River Turia, the group of six futuristic structures, most of them designed by Valencian architect Santiago Calatrava, has a seemingly endless capacity for entertaining and stimulating the mind. There's a lot to see and do inside, so you'll need to plan your visit carefully if time is short. Oceanographic of Valencia The building you are seeing is the largest aquarium in Europe and was built by the architect Felix Candela. It's not a one building actually, but a complex of many buildings in which marine ecosystems and environments of many parts of the world are depicted. These parts include wetlands, Mediterranean, Antarctic, Arctic and islands, temperate and tropical, and the Red Sea. Travel through the longest underwater tunnel in Europe, more than 45,000 examples of 500 different marine species below the sharp teeth of sharks and discover the only family of beluga whales in Europe. Immerse yourself and be amazed by the most important marine ecosystems in the world represented at Oceanographic Valencia. Moreover, the park also has a spectacular dolphinarium, an auditorium within which one can find the Red Sea Aquarium with an area for the mangrove swamps and another for the marshlands, and different garden areas, with more than 80 different plant species. And of course it also offers many different services such as shops and restaurants, amongst which should be highlighted the underwater restaurant where clients can have dinner surrounded by an immense aquarium. Visiting the Oceanographic is a unique experience. Everything is possible in this magical place. Palau de les Arts Reina Sofia So the tremendous Valencia Opera House is meant to serve as both a major performing arts facility for Valencia and as a dynamic urban landmark, helping to consolidate and animate the area in which it is built. The main components of its program are an auditorium seating 1,706, suitable for opera productions as well as concerts and ballet, a 380-seat chamber music hall for ensemble performances, drama, and other events, and an auditorium seating up to 1,520 people, equipped with advanced film and video projection systems, offering the possibility of viewing performances on special video screens. It is located adjacent to the main building, is a 400-seat auditorium for experimental theater and dance, with gallery space for exhibitions of fine arts and decorative arts. Designed by Santiago Calatrava, on an 86-acre site along the dry bed of the Turia River, Valencia Opera House is conceived as the final element in the City of Arts and Sciences complex. Situated midway between the old city and the coastal district of Nazareth, the complex is intended by the Generalitat Valenciana to bring new focus to an incoherent and underdeveloped area of Valencia and to link the center city with the sea. Malvarosa Beach The Malvarosa Beach is a fine golden sand beach, lined by a promenade, restaurants, and cafes. It is the most famous and best known of all the beaches in Valencia and has inspired great artists. Its name, alongside the name of the area, dates from 1848 when the French botanist Félix Robillard, head groundskeeper of the Champs Élysées, purchased a huge real estate parcel and planted a few animal categories including Geranium odoratissimum, the well-known Malvarosa, which he developed on a modern scale for his plant substances production line. If you ever get a chance to visit Valencia then it is a must-try kind of place. The beach, which at that time was used to unload fishing and for the trade between the different villages near the capital, 
the beach became a resting place of the Valencian bourgeoisie. If you ever get a chance, then do visit Malvarosa Beach, the central market of Valencia. Starting in 1839, Market of Valencia was used as an open-air market, but by the end of the 19th century, city authorities were looking to build an indoor market space at the spot. What they got was an enormous tribute to the architectural use of steel and glass. After a number of architectural competitions, the winning design was a stunning example of the modernist style known as Valencian Art Nouveau. From a distance, the structure looks more like a cathedral than a covered market, the roof's domes, in particular the one with the large cupola at the center of the building, give the exterior an appearance very much like an Italian Duomo. After 14 years of construction it was completed in 1928, the market covers over 86,000 square feet in two floors. Inside it mainly sells food, which is highly diverse and produces a fantastic smell. There are also a number of stalls selling touristic wares plus restaurants and bars, including the Central Bar, which is very popular with tourists and locals alike. Let me tell you more that the market is open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., located in the El Mercat neighborhood of Valencia. Valencia Cathedral Did you also know the cathedral holds one of the most important pieces of art from the first Spanish Renaissance? And the Cathedral Museum is the home to pieces by Maella or Goya. Other curiosities you should not miss out on are climbing the Miguelit Tower or learning about the history of Virgin del Bune Pardo. Built on an ancient Roman temple that was later a mosque, the Cathedral of Valencia is a Gothic-style building, although it preserves many elements from different periods, from Romanesque to Baroque eras. Work on the current building began in the 13th century, the Latin cross, the ambulatory and lantern tower over the crossing. In the 15th century, the chapter house was built, nowadays the chapel of the Holy Chalice, as well as the lantern tower, the Miguelit door and the door of the apostles. Other parts taking the spotlight are the Baroque-style door of the irons, and the doors of the Palau or of the Almoina. Serrano's Towers So let's talk about the Serrano's Gate also known as Serrano's Towers, it is one of the 12 gates that formed part of the ancient city wall of Valencia. Under the supervision of Per Balaguer, construction began in 1392. The towers were designed to be defensive structures at one of the busiest city gates. They were saved from demolition when the city walls were knocked down in 1865 and used as a prison for the nobility between 1586 and 1887. The back of the towers have been opened so that the pointed arches and the vaulted domes can now be seen from the Plaza de los Fueros. The towers represent an excellent example of Gothic architecture. The Serrano's towers were used both as a defensive feature of the city and also as a triumphal arch currently. The most outstanding event that takes place at the feet of the towers is the Crida. L.A. Lanja The Lanja is an emblematic building of the city and one of the most famous civil Gothic monuments in Europe. It was declared a National Historic and Artistic Monument in July 1931 and was made a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in December 1996. The Lanja is located in the center of the city in front of the Central Market and the Temple of Santos Juanes and occupies a rectangular area of 1.990 square meters. At the end of the 13th century, as a result of the prosperity in Valencia at the time, the old Lanja became insufficient and it was decided to build a new exchange. Biopark Valencia Biopark Valencia is a unique zoo. Its design employs the zoo immersion concept, in which visitors are surrounded by meticulous recreations of the natural habitats being presented. Trust me you will gonna love it. Social animals that live together in groups are displayed, as well as groups of different species that coexist in the same habitats. Predatory species are integrated into the visual space, but are separated from other species by barriers invisible to the eye of the visitor, ensuring the safety of both the animals and the people. The animals, vegetation and landscape provide opportunities for discovering the complexity of natural ecosystems. Visitors can explore the ecosystems of the savanna, the forests of Madagascar and equatorial Africa, while getting up close to silverback gorillas, leopards, lions, rhinos, hippos and many more. Turia Gardens The Turia Gardens is one of the largest urban parks in Spain. It runs through the city along 9 kilometers of green space boasting footpaths, leisure and sports areas, and romantic spots where you can unwind. 
From Cabessera Park to the City of Arts and Sciences, the Turiat Gardens are the perfect place for runners, cyclists, families, and nature enthusiasts. One of the curiosities of the park is the Gulliver, a slide park where children can slide over Gulliver as if it were Lilliputians. In the park, you can also visit Parque de Cabessera and Biopark, Hemisferico, and La Ciudad de las Arts y las Sciences on the opposite side. A fun way to explore the Turia Gardens without getting tired much is renting a bike, and a second option would be renting a Segway to get from one place to another and having fun atop these peculiar vehicles. Throughout the gardens, we also find bars, terraces, and restaurants. Which place you have liked the most and why? Let us know in the comment section. Also don't forget to like the video. Thanks for watching.